your family in the Lord. May you know the great joy of being the sons and daughters of God. May He bless you and keep you throughout this Lenten season with the full assurance that one day, as He rose from the grave, we too shall rise with Him. Please join me in bowing your heads in prayer at this time. Lord, life is full of expectations. Full of things that we expect to happen. But so often, our lives turn out in unexpected ways. Reassure us that throughout our lives you are with us. That throughout all things that happen in our lives, that you are our guide. Lead us to lean on your scripture, that it might show us your way. For you have promised that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, help us remember that you are a God who does unexpected things. Things that are amazing. Things that are beyond compare. Because you love us. In the name of Jesus, who is our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. You all know that idiom, probably not only by hearing that idiom, but probably because of maybe the experiences of your life. You know, 2020 did a little series last year on various fads in our society today. And one of the ones that stand out in my mind were these foot detox pads. You take this detox pad and you put it on your foot right before you go to bed. During the night, it sucks all those terrible things from your body. When you wake up, you can look at that detox pad and you can see and smell all those awful things that were sucking your energy. And for $19.99 plus shipping and handling, you too could have it. Well, plus, in addition to that, they sold these eye pads, eye patches, not eye pads, eye patches as well that would remove crow's feet and, and those dark circles under your eyes that you get when you stay up with the youth all night. And, and that would be part of the deal for $19.99 plus shipping and handling. Well, 2020, in their usual fashion, did a little investigation there. And as you all are probably not surprised, maybe some of you even tried these pads, but they didn't really work. Most people who tried the pads did not notice any increase in energy, any increase in strength, and unfortunately those people with the dark uh, circles under their eyes still had dark circles under their eyes. If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. You know, probably you remember the show Mythbusters and all the things that they go through and all the things that they debunk. So many things in our lives are this way. And it's nothing new, is it? Throughout history, there have been things that have been promised to the world, promised to us, and just too good to be true. I'd like to take you back to our Old Testament lesson for this morning, from Genesis chapter 12. Here we have Abram, not yet Abraham, keep that in mind. We have Abram, and he's called from his home, or of the Chaldeans. He's called to go, to leave his family, to leave his brothers, to leave his father, to change everything that's normal, and go and follow God's command. That's a pretty big call, isn't it? How many of you would just pick up, stop, pick up all that you have right now and go? Most of us probably would not. We'd want to think about it a little bit. We'd want to consider it for a few minutes. We'd want to say, God, are you sure? You know, things are pretty comfortable right now. But God did give Abram a promise. He said to him, I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So at least Abram wasn't going just without that promise. Can you imagine how he felt? Maybe there was some excitement, but also some trepidation. He is, after all, going into the land of Canaan, another person's land, and God promised this land to him. Well, I wonder how Abram felt, because just a little later in the chapter, he gets to this land that God sends him to, and there's a famine. So he immediately has to go to Egypt. Next chapter, he and his nephew, Lot, they get in a little bit of an argument, their herdsmen do, so they have to separate. Next chapter, he has to send his men to go rescue Lot. And it goes on and on like that. How do you think Abram felt? Because not only did he go through all those things, but he didn't have an heir. Would it surprise you 
if maybe he said to himself, Lord, is this too good to be true? Are your promises, did I hear you right? Is this really what you told me to do? Fast forward in time. We have our John chapter 3 gospel lesson for this morning. Nicodemus comes to Jesus. He comes at night. He recognizes Jesus as a teacher. He's a little bit different. He knows God is with him. But he doesn't know who he is. Again, he's got that same question. Are you really the Messiah? Are you really the one that God sent? Because the Messiah we were expecting... He wasn't going to tell us to pay taxes to the Romans, to carry the armor an extra mile, to do all these things and be good as citizens to the Romans. He was going to wipe the Romans out, push them out of the land, and make us the great nation. See, God's people, from Abraham on, were always in the shadow of great nations. God promised to make Abram a great nation, but, you know, time after time, the people of God were vassals to other nations. They weren't really ever a great nation. So you have to wonder if maybe God's people, his chosen people, wondered at times, were his promises too good to be true? Let's fast forward to today. I wonder if any of you have ever wondered that. Are God's promises too good to be true? We have a number of expectations, promises that are made. Things that people have told us. Sometimes you've heard from preachers all these things about the Christian life, the Christian walk. Maybe you had family members who told you what comfort they have in the faith, but have never felt it. Maybe you've been promised that life would be easier, but life doesn't seem any easier. There's a lot of preachers who preach that message, aren't there? Preachers who go throughout the world telling us that if you just trust God more, well then all things that you need will happen. In fact, when things aren't going your way, maybe people have said this cliche to you. Well, it's not that God has moved. It's that you've moved away from God. Has any of you ever heard that before? I know I've been told that before, and, and and it boggles my mind. Because it puts it all on us. It puts all those expectations, all those demands on us as Christians. And it forgets who our God is. We live in this world that is full of expectations and full of unexpected things. But, you know, honestly, as Christians, God doesn't doesn't promise us that things will be easy. That things will go the way we expect them to go. God doesn't promise us that there won't be hurt. He doesn't promise us that there won't be pain in our lives. He doesn't promise us that we won't lose the ones we love and that we won't cry tears and that our hearts won't be broken. God doesn't promise that in His Word. Unfortunately, as Christians, in this world we live in, we're still exposed to the sin of this world, the pain of the world and the loss of this world. And unfortunately, on this side of eternity, God says we can expect something. If we follow Him faithfully, if we trust in Him faithfully, what does He say? That we're going to be persecuted by the world. Jesus in the Gospels tells us that if you follow Me, the world will persecute you. He doesn't promise us the easy life. But instead, He promises us to expect difficulty. And isn't that who Satan picks on too? Believers. People of God. People who trust God, who follow God. Because those who aren't following Him, He already has them in His clutches. We try to follow the Lord. We try to live in faith. He goes after us. He attacks us. Seems like all the expectations of this life, well, there's not really any that we can hope on that is without God you know there's a book in the Old Testament Ecclesiastes I really like that book of Ecclesiastes because as Solomon wrote it he goes through all these things God blessed Solomon with great wisdom he blessed Solomon with great wealth he blessed Solomon with great uh, power but what does Solomon say if you know Ecclesiastes 
There's a famous phrase, meaningless, meaningless. All is meaningless without God. Without God, all is meaningless. What we can expect of this life is disappointment and hurt. But what we can expect of God is promise. Now, I know most of you know this by heart, but just in case you don't, I want you to turn back to our gospel lesson. We're going to read through John 3.16, but we're not going to stop at John 3.16. We're going to read through John 3.17 too, because there is the most unexpected thing in John 3.17 about that text. Everybody got it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Did you catch that right at the end? God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, to condemn the sinners of this world, but instead to save this world, to save you and to save me. You know, as Christians, we don't have it all together. Maybe the world expects us to, but we know that's not the case. I don't have it together, and I know you all don't. In fact, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I don't have it all together. It's kind of funny in some ways, isn't it? But in other ways, it feels good to be honest. Because when we're honest like that, we realize how much we have in common with not only those in the church around us, but those outside the church door. Because one thing every person has in common is their need for a Savior, their need for Jesus, their need for salvation. And God unexpectedly sent His Son to redeem each of us And in an unexpected way, Satan stirred up the pot. He pulled strings and stirred up the hearts of the Romans that they might brutalize Christ. He stirred up the the, the hearts of his disciples so they might abandon Christ. He stirred up the hearts of the leaders so they might send him to the cross. You can imagine that Satan must have been sitting there feeling pretty good about himself. Thinking that he'd won. But in a very unexpected way. God showed him who won. Because Jesus in his death conquered death. Because Jesus in his death conquered sin. Because Jesus in his death conquered our eternal death and gave us eternal life. And that is the promise our unexpected God gives to us. Because God works an unexpected way. We may have a line of expectations, but God doesn't work as we expect him to. And so in this Lenten season, We need to give up those expectations, those things that we expect of God, because we know He is a God who works in unexpected ways, who works in ways that we would not imagine, but in ways that are beyond what we compare. That doesn't mean that the pain will go away in our lives, that the hurt will go away, but it does mean that God will work through those things and ultimately to our hope and promise of life eternal with Him. That doesn't mean that every day will be easy for you but only that you know the promise that he's given us. And that promise is important. Sometimes it's easy to take that promise for granted. You hear it so often. You hear that Jesus died for you. You almost come to expect it. But I want you to do one more thing today. Think hard on what Jesus did for you. Think about His willingness to descend from heaven for you. To take on human flesh for you. To experience the pain and sufferings of death for you. To forgive you and give you eternal life. It's unexpected because we didn't deserve it. But our God does unexpected things because He loves us. Your God, our God, loves you. And even though you don't have it all together, one day when He calls us to Him, He will bring it all together to His good and His glory. Amen. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer.
Lord, we are people who do not have it all together. Sometimes we want to live lives that sound like we have it all together, that look like we have it all together, but we know deep down that without you, we would be hopeless. We would only have despair. But because of you, we have hope, we have promise, and we have eternal life. Lord, help us to live each day in the midst of that promise, in the midst of your grace, knowing that time and again you work in unexpected ways. And you continue to do so. Lord, help us always to not only receive your grace, but to share that grace, to show that love to one another. We thank you that through this Lenten season, we know that you are with us. Be with us throughout our days. In Jesus' name, amen.